good morning everyone so today we are going to talk about spanning trees we have already discussed what a tree is so recall that a tree is a connected graph with no cycles so this was the problem we discussed and you can see that this is a way you can lay a wires so that the central office is connected to all the houses through wires this is actually a spanning tree because we are covering all the houses but the approach is quite expensive we can think of the better approach where we have used the lesser number of the wires so while discussing the spanning trees later on we are going to discuss about minimum weighted spanning trees so spanning trees we know that a tree is minimally connected it means it has n minus 1 edges which are the least number of the edges a connected graph can have and now for a given graph we look for a subgraph that connects all the vertices of this graph with least number of the edges it means that we are looking for a tree which is connecting all the vertices of graph g so a sub tree which means a sub graph which is a tree of a graph is a spanning tree if the vertex set of t and g are same so let us look at this graph the edges in bold along with the vertices represents the spanning tree of the given graph of course the spanning tree is not unique and in the same way we can talk of the spanning forest where we look for a spanning tree of each of the components if we see this question then we need to find the spanning tree of the following graph so to find the spanning tree we should mark all the vertices and we start connecting them in such a way that it should not form a cycle so this is a one possible way again it's not unique so there could be many ways for forming the spanning trees next is draw all the spanning trees of the graph below so drawing all the spanning trees and g is a labeled graph so please do try by yourself you found that there are three spanning trees for the following graph a easy question but if i think of k5 so here in g there are four vertices and if i think of k5 with five vertices but lot of edges and if i have to count the number of the spanning trees then you will see that the number is quite large here when we are looking for the number of the spanning trees then we are assuming the graph is labeled so labeled k5 it has 125 distinct spanning trees but how do we compute it so to compute it in today's class we are going to introduce the concept of matrices so the first one is adjacency matrix very important concept especially when we have to give the graph in the form of a data then they are very helpful but at the same time we are going to see that they have very very interesting applications So adjacency matrix, as the name suggests, denoted as AIG, is a square matrix mainly used to re to represent simple labeled graph, and entries are zero and one. So if AIJ is equal to zero, which means VI and VJ are not adjacent, and since the graph is undirected, so AIJ is always equal to AJI. and if aij is equal to 1 it implies vi and vj the vertices vi and vj are adjacent so for a simple graph you'll always get a 0 1 matrix 0 1 symmetric matrix so diagonal entries are always zero but if you consider loop then the diagonal entries so aii is equal to 2 if there is a loop vi then 
if you recall the degree sum formula and the concept of the degree so in that case a i i would be 2 similarly if there are multiple edges so for example three edges between v i and v j then we can say that a i j is equal to 3. So let's quickly try to find out the adjacency matrix of the following graph. So whenever you write the adjacency matrix, the first thing is to because adjacency matrix we can only compute with respect to the labeled graph. And now you can start filling the entries. So u1 is not adjacent to u1 but it is adjacent to u2, it is adjacent to u3 with two edges. It is not adjacent to u4, not adjacent to u5. Even u5 is an isolated vertex. So therefore I can have all the entries 0 because it is not adjacent to any of the vertex. Now u2 is adjacent to u1. It is adjacent to u3 but it is not adjacent to u4. u3 is adjacent to u1, u2 and u4 and then the u4 it is adjacent to u3 as well as it is adjacent to u4 with a loop so this is how we can compute the adjacency matrix for the following graph just one correction that when u1 is adjacent to u3 then this u13 should be 2 yes it's true and u31 should be 2 okay now if we have given a matrix please do try to draw the corresponding graph do it by yourself and you will find that this is the required graph for the given adjacency matrix the next is Compute the number of distinct walks from u1 to u1 of length 2 and length 3 in the given graph. Please do try it by yourself. If I have u1, then one of the simplest way to look of the walk of length 2 is to go to all the vertices to which u1 is adjacent. So you can go from u1 to u2 and come back. You can go to u1 to u3 and come back. You can go to u1 to u3 by this edge and come back. But at the same time, you can go from to e1 and come back by e3. You can go to e3 and come back by e1. And write down e2, e2, e1, e1, e3, e3. And this means that there are 5 walks of length 2. Similarly, now you can try to compute the walks of length 3. If it is a simple graph, then the degree of any vertex gives us the walks of length 2. So for length 3, you can go, so length 3 means 3 edges are involved, you can go from E2, then e4 and come back through e1 or you can go to e2 e4 and come back to e3 but at the same time you can go from e1 e4 e2 and e3 e4 e2 so the number of walks of length 3 are 4 but if i have to find the number of the walks of length 20 from one vertex to the other then the problem becomes quite complex and now we see a very interesting application of adjacency matrix. So the theorem says that let G be a graph of order n, labeled graph, then entry a i j in a rest to the power k where a is the adjacency matrix of graph G is number of distinct walks from u i to u j of length k. So if I am looking for length 1 then I should consider the adjacency matrix of length 2, I should consider a square, a cube and so on. Let's consider the same example. So when I say that now a i j gives you the length, so for example u1 to u3, so this is the entry u1 to u3. It means there are two walks of length 
2 of length 1 from u1 to u3. So this is one walk, this is the other walk. If it is 0, it means from u1 to u5 there is no walk. If it is 1, it means from u4 to u3 there is only one walk and so on. Similarly, now a g square or a square, it represents the number of walks of length 2. So this we have already computed that a11 in a square gives you the length of walk, the number of walks of length 2 in the original given graph. And others you can verify by yourself. For example, this one. So from u1 to u2, there are from u1 to u2, there are two walks of length 2. Similarly, from u1 to u3, so from u1 to u2, you can see this is one and the other, this is one and the other, and so on and so on. Also recall a cube, so this represents, we have already computed the number of walks of length 3, they are 4. And now using computer, we can easily compute a raised to the power 20 or a raised to the power 100, that gives us the number of the walks of length 100. So let a and a square represent adjacency matrix of the simple graphs g and g dash respectively then compute the given adjacency matrix. Very very interesting question, please think over it. So a is the adjacency matrix of g and a square is the adjacency matrix of g dash but also given that g dash is simple. Now in the simple graph all diagonal entries are 0 and therefore all diagonal entries are 0 here. But this same a square represents number of walks, number of walks of length 2 in g. Yes. So one side we are saying that a i i is equal to 0, all diagonal entries are 0. So if this is a square and diagonal entries are 0, it means that the number of walks of length 2 in the given graph are 0. And since the graph is simple, the only way to have the number of, only way to have walk of length 2 is you go from ui to uj and come back uj to ui since the graph is simple this is the only way it means that as i have already told you the degree of the vertex in a simple graph gives you the walks of length 2 and this represents that degree of all the vertices are 0 it means the graph is null graph and the matrix A is the zero matrix. So again give a thought to this problem. In the next class we will see that how the concept of adjacency matrix will be helpful in computing the number of the spanning trees. Thank you very much.